Hey, sofrito lovers, enjoy this week's Dominican food mukbang. Hey, sofrito lovers, this is Ben Ramos bringing you another mukbang from the Northwest Bronx. It's the Bronx, the home of hip hop and salsa. I am bringing you comida dominicana, Dominican food. Yes, mi gente, I am bringing you some Dominican deliciousness. I live in a very Dominican neighborhood in the Bronx. When I am with David on the weekends, we are in Washington Heights, the heart of the Dominican community in New York City. And I grew, even grew up in a part of Harlem that was very Dominican. So I'm bringing you Dominican food. It is not a popular mukbang at all. You see Puerto Rican food, you see Mexican food, you see Salvadoran food, you see Argentinian food. I am bringing you Dominican food, mi gente. This is some penil. Because Dominicans eat pernil too. It's a very Caribbean thing to eat some roasted pork. Um, some delicious pernil. I have some stewed carrots that were actually made con una carne de red with a Dominican style beef stew. But I asked him to give me some carrots because I love carrots. And this is the star of the show. This is mangu. Mangu is mashed plantains. Mashed plantains that have been boiled. Salt and peppered butter and made with a little bit of the water that the plantains were boiling in and some cold water just mixed together. Oh, I've been eating too, I've been talking too long. I haven't been eating at all. Mira, 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 mira. Mm. Mm. Mango. Mm. Okay, so some of my Puerto Rican Latinx from the Caribbean folks are looking at me like, you're eating mangu at night for dinner? Are you crazy? Because mangu is something that you tend to eat in the morning. Um, there's a very famous Dominican dish, a national dish called mangu con los tres golpes. Mangu with three hits. And it's basically mangu in the morning with a fried egg, fried salami, and fried white cheese. It's like very working class Dominican food. Uh, Dominican workers would eat that because it was full of protein and full of carbs and it gave you a lot of energy and fueled you for the day because some some workers sometimes wouldn't even get to, you know, they'd have breakfast and then wouldn't eat until a late lunch or maybe even an early dinner. Mm. So there's some folks, probably some Dominicans that are like, are you eating mangu for dinner? Yes, I am having mangu for dinner because it's mashed delicious platanos. You can eat that all day long. Now, very known for being a Dominican dish, Puerto Ricans and Cubans and some other Central American, some South American Latinos eat it too. But mangu is really known as a Dominican dish. Puerto Ricans make it to my mom. Anytime she decided to boil platanos, she would make mangu. Um, it's delicious. It's hearty. I think it's better than mashed potatoes. I'm sorry. Sorry. Mmm. Mmm. Mira este pernil. It's nice and fatty and porky and delicious. Mmm. That's right. I am one of those people that I think mangu is better than mashed potatoes. I'm sorry. Boricos may come for me and that's okay. Come for me. I am putting some ketchup on my penil, which for some other folks is like sacrilege. But listen, I like tomato ketchup on my penil. Come for me. Come for me. If you're feeling triggered, come for me. And not just that, but I am also going to put, I am also going to put, just in case you didn't hear me say it, a little bit of American style hot sauce on my penil. Oh my God. There are people cringing. The penil purists are like, you did not just put hot sauce and um, American hot sauce and ketchup on your penil. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. This is when I, what I want to start bringing you guys a little bit more of. More Latin food that is not. Mmm. 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 Esto está divino. Esto está por la maceta. Oh, it's so good. I want to start bringing you more 
dishes and Latino food that you're not used to seeing. I think, you know, the Mexican mukbangs with all the tacos and burritos are overdone. A lot of the Puerto Rican mukbangs are, you know, pernil and arroz con gandul. You know, a lot of the typical Puerto Rican foods. I want to bring you some atypical Puerto Rican foods, stuff that I'm sure you've never heard of. Mmm. Oh. These carrots were made in a beef stew, in a Dominican style carne guisada beef stew. And I saw them floating there and I was like, can you give me some? And the lady was like, no problem. Oh, these carrots are amazing. Mmm. Soft, sweet. They have a lot of the flavor, the beef flavoring. Mmm. I love stewed carrots. Oh. And I think it complements everything here so well. I'm going to be bringing you more of these types of mug mons. More Latino, Latinx, all of that good stuff, whatever identifying name, food, outside of the usual, like Dominican food, man. Not a lot of Dominican mukbangs out there. I want to bring you some more of this stuff, some more Puerto Rican food that you've never heard of, some, some stuff outside of the usual. Mm. Those are the channel plans. Maybe for more for 2020. Oh. I have a lot of energy today. It was actually a stressful day at work, yet a good day at work as well. You know, kids are frustrating and annoying and tiring and inspirational and re revitalizing and a lot of other great and wonderful stuff and stuff in between. <laughs> But um, today was a day that started off very stressful and ended really fun. God bless it. Mm. And I was like, let me make a Dominican mukbang. Because I was surrounded by Dominicans all day. Ah. Mango. Mm. So good. So good. So starchy. And full of that wonderful plantain flavor and nice and soft and creamy. I've said it already four or five times and I will say it another million times. I prefer mango over mashed potatoes any day. Some people think I'm crazy. Ah, stewed. Mmm. This place, this food comes from a restaurant called El Mangu Sabroso, which is the delicious mango. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of Dominican restaurants in Washington Heights, parts of the Bronx, all over the city. There are a lot of mango sabroso, mango espectacular, mango fantastico. <laughs> mm. I have to admit, El mangu sabroso knows how to throw down on their mangu. It just tastes good. At first, I was concerned because it looked very dry. I was like, oh, Lord, this thing has been, on, has been on a steam table and it's been under those lights and it's probably dried out beyond belief, but it is so great. In fact, if anything, it has a nice little crust on the top and then the inside is pure, sweet, starchy, not sweet, but starchy, savory, delicious, earthy mangu. Mm. Though you can make mango with plantains that are ripe. The, the very ripe black and deeply yellow um, plantains, you can boil those and make a very sweet mango as well. I don't think it's as popular as the, the savory mango made from plantains that are green and not overly ripe, but I love the sweet mango as well. Mm. There's just something with me as well with mangoes. Mangoes have to have to be made with pork. A chuleta, which is a pork chop, or carne de cedo guisado, you know, chunk, uh, pork chunks that are stewed, or pernil. I just, there's something for me, and I know a lot of other people that are like this as well. They need their mango to be served with pork. 
I mean, again, mangu is usually a breakfast meal with like fried cheese, a fried egg and salami, which is, you know, more beef than anything else. But me and a lot of other people, it's mangu has to be served with pork. It's just, oh, oh, if I had, if I didn't have penila, I would have like a fried pork chop or carne de cerdo guisado, Dominican style pork, pork chunks that have been stewed. There's just something about, mm, something about pork with mangu that just, it, it goes together like burgers and fries. It goes together like pizza and wings, peanut butter and jelly. It just, it just works for me. Mm. I wanted to bring you the beginnings of, I don't, I don't want to call it a new series, but it's where the direction in which I want to take this channel I really enjoy doing that eating like series. And I want to bring you more, more mukbangs that are more unique and not, you know, I don't want to keep bringing the same Puerto Rican food. I want to bring you different types of Puerto Rican foods. I want to bring you different types of Latino, Latino dishes. I don't know how many, like I said, I haven't heard of any Dominican mukbangs. If they're out there, I haven't run into them. In fact, if they're out there, post the links below. I want to see them. Mmm. Mmm. Mangu is comfort food. It's just <clears throat> hearty and filling and just delicious. And penil. I mean, I love penil. Uh, roasted pork shoulder. Penil. Ugh. Mmm with a little bit of ketchup and hot sauce. Amazing. Oh. Like I said, work was a little crazy today, but it was also pretty good. Gearing up for the holidays. We're gonna be doing a winter festival at the school. It's gonna be cool, it's gonna be fun. I am also just prepping myself because in about two weeks, I am going to California for two weeks. I'm leaving December 20th, coming back January 4th to be in Southern California in the desert, having my first Christmas, birthday, and New Year's outside of New York City in I don't know how many years. I don't know how many decades. I've always been Christmas, my birthday, which is um, December 28th, and on January 1st, always been in New York City. Even when I lived outside of the city in DC for about two years in college, I was here in New York for all of those holidays. It's been very, very, very few times that I haven't been. Mm. So we're gonna be in Southern California visiting the in-laws, getting ready to spend some amazing time with my my other mom and my other dad. I love David's family. They're amazing. And it's going to be really interesting to spend these holidays, which in my mind is very deeply cemented in the winter time with snow and cold, to be experiencing them in Southern California in the desert. <laughs> David says it's kind of trippy because, you know, so much of our media and our imagery of Christmas is very snow and winter based. And when you live in the desert, <laughs> you know, Santa Claus goes down your chimney, chimney, uh, chimney, chimney. Oh my God, I I'm, can't talk and eat at the same time. Going down your chimney, chimney in uh, uh, sandals and a Bermuda shorts and all that good stuff. Mm. Mm. So good. Mm. So getting ready for the holidays. Just um excited for the two solid weeks off. Going to be restful, going to be fun. I'm going to see how many videos I can actually make in California. Those two weeks may be a bit of a vacation even from the channel. I don't know, guys. I got to let you guys know that. But um, definitely 
Mm. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. Inspiration. There's this wonderful Salvadoran Central American restaurant that my in-laws took me to one time. Oh, my God. Maybe I'll make a, a Salvadoran mukbang. Mm. That place had amazing food. Ooh, maybe I will produce a video or two over the break. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Now the wheels are turning. Mmm. <laughs> a pupusa and tamal. Salvadoran mukbang. Oh my god. So, so Felipe lovers, if you like this video, comment, share, smash the like button. If you're new to the channel, bienvenidos, welcome. If you're not new to the channel and you still haven't subscribed, subscribe. Become a part of the Sofrito Lovers family online. Follow me on my blog, sofritoinmysoul.blogspot.com. Follow me on all the social media, Sofrito in My Soul, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Como siempre, go out there, go taste for yourself. If you've never had mango, go and have some mango. You'll love it, especially for, for breakfast. But hey, you can have it for lunch or dinner too. They, ha they have it available. Go out there, go have some culinary adventures, go taste for yourself. Como siempre, mucho amor.